welcome back to the vlog guys so this week um, one we are going deer hunting Friday we are going up to Paris and you're gonna try to get us a deer try to clap us a deer Friday morning so we're gonna see what happens um, it might be a little rainy but you know what I've hunted in the rain before it ain't gonna stop me so um, this morning guys I went and got uh, got the feed order um, so like I was telling you guys it's about that weird transition time I know I went and got feed about a week and a half ago um, we're at that point in time where I needed to get the bigger order. I just didn't a week and a half ago, and I probably should have. It would last us a whole month, but you can tell. I don't know if you can see it or not, but the whole bed of the truck is full of feed. I'm not kidding you, filled to the top. So, um, there is, what is that? 28, hold on. There is 30 bags of feed back there. So, um, that should hopefully last us close to a month. Um, but we'll see. Um, it's all chicken food, so we may have to come back and get some goat food. I also have a new uh, a new protein tub in there that I'm going to try out with the goats. So um, for you, those of you that don't know what a protein tub is, um, it's something that um, one has a bunch of minerals in it. And it's good for the animals, but it also has a bunch of protein in it and keeps weight on them. So the girls are about to have their babies in about three weeks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in with them and Notorious and have them eating on that to go ahead and uh, get some extra muscle and stuff on them when they have their babies. The heavier they are, the better they do seem to do with it um, as far as how heavy the doughs are. Um, obviously, you want lighter weight babies, but the heavier the dough, they seem to do better with it. So um, that's what we got there. I'll show you guys that when we unload the feed later. Uh, I'll show you guys that tub. Uh, let's see what else. We're going to take care of pork and chop this afternoon. I already stopped by and fed them this morning, but uh, we're going to do some water stuff over there. Um, Woody ended up hooking up the automatic waterer for us again, which is nice. I really appreciate that he did that. Um, also, we got slow traffic as can be here. Everybody trying to get off their way station. Pain in the rear. But uh, we'll catch up with you guys in a little while when we're unloading feed and uh, taking care of pork and chop. Well, guys, it's the weekly pig update time. So I got to climb in here and get their water trough that is normally sitting over there. So I got to go grab it. Hey, guys. So I gotta climb in there with him, get that out of there. Um, I don't have to worry about putting it back, uh, filling it up today, um, just because the automatic water is hooked back up. So I don't have to worry about that, which is the bright side. All right, guys, we got the trough out. I'm just gonna leave it outside of the pen for now, because like I said, the automatic water is hooked back up, at least till tomorrow. And then tomorrow night, it'll have to get unhooked because it's gonna freeze again, so. Yes, guys, it's marshmallow time. Give us just a second. Getting all dirty. You out rolling in the mud. Pork, you must have been hopping on your sister because she got hoof prints on her. Get down. Oh, those are some good marshmallows, guys. Huh? I know you can't talk, but. Well guys, that's the weekly pig update. They're getting big. T minus uh, three weeks? T minus three weeks? All right guys, there it is. There's uh, 1,500 pounds of food back here. That ought to last us, I think, uh, oh, three and a half weeks, that should. So uh, we're gonna get this put away and we'll catch back up with you guys. Morning guys, it is uh, about 5.30 in the morning. Um, we're going out to the stand. Um, didn't get to go up to Paris this week just because they're having some family stuff going on. It's no big deal. Family is more important than anything. So um, that's something I try to preach with here with you guys is that family is more important than anything. So um, we're headed out to the stand, guys. We're going to see what we get. Uh, probably only hunting this morning. Um, so I got to deliver eggs and do a bunch of other stuff today. So uh, we'll see if uh, anything strolls by us. If not, it is what it is. I got multiple other seasons I can hunt still this year, so uh, we'll catch you guys after the morning hunt. All right, guys. Since uh, hunting didn't go so great today, um, I decided to do a segment for you guys that we're gonna call "Will It Start?" Um, I have a little uh, video going over what I used to hunt that we'll put in after this, so that you guys can see uh, what weapons I use when I go hunting. But 
we're gonna do will it start so my old tractor over here hasn't started in probably since this time last year if not a little bit earlier um, we just hadn't had a use for but uh, I want to get back to using her I gotta get a tire put on her I don't know why I'm gonna do that I want to see if the tire store has gotten used ones actually it just needs a tube um, but the rear tires are pretty cracked so they, they really need to be replaced but uh, as you all know tractor tires are expensive so, so we'll see what happens there but uh, we're gonna see if she starts I gotta get the battery charger out I don't even know the battery's any good anymore but we're gonna get the battery charger out charge the old battery up and uh, see if we can't give her a start so uh, yep I'm gonna get that battery charger going all right guys I got the old battery hooked up she is deader than dead nine percent so we're gonna see what happens here charge her up and uh, see if the old girl wants to crank all right guys so uh, here goes nothing on giving a tractor an old start uh, we gotta remember that the gas in this is a year old so it is shot so if she starts she's probably gonna run like uh, well she's not gonna run very well she's gonna be pop, 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 misfiring and everything else so uh, we're gonna give her the juice and uh, see if she goes guys well, uh, here goes nothing, and if she doesn't go now, I'm going to leave the charger on her all day. When we get back out here to feed tonight, I'm going to give her another go and see if uh, she pops off then. So, uh, I'm going to put you guys on the tripod here. Alright guys, so the battery in the tractor is donezo, finito, point voyage, gone, whatever you want to call it. It ain't holding a charge, it's done for. Um, it was getting a little weak um, when I parked the tractor, so I'm really not surprised. But what I'm going to do is, um, this battery that I have is not going to fit in the battery box, but I will use it to jump the tractor. This is out of the Ranger, so it was dead when it came out of the Ranger just because the alternator blew up and wasn't charging this, everything else. So, got the charger hooked up to it, gonna get this charged up. Then we're gonna use our old uh, handy dandy trusty jumper cables over here to uh, to go ahead and jump the, tr the tractor uh, once this battery gets charged. So, uh, I'll catch back up with you guys once this, is, uh, this battery's charged. All right, guys, here goes nothing. I got the battery charged up, so uh, the Ranger battery, that is. So we've got the jumper cables hooked up. I'm going to put you guys on the tripod and uh, see if we can't get her cranking over. Well, guys, to answer the question of will it start, it looks like not today. Um, I think I'm going to have to nose the diesel up in here um, to jump start it and just get it fired back up. It's not locked up. It's free spinning. It just doesn't have enough juice right now to start it off. So, uh... We'll see what happens. Maybe I charge that battery up more. It was at 76%, so I would have thought it had been enough, but uh, we'll charge the battery up more, let it charge throughout the day, and then uh, we'll get back out here this afternoon, see if it won't pop her off. But, uh, yeah, that's what we got for now, guys. So will it start? No, not right now. We'll, uh, we'll catch you guys in a little bit. All right, guys, I got another pig update for you here. Um, what it is is uh, the owner, Woody, took care of this uh, automatic feeder and he kind of opened the holes down here a little bit more so the feed comes through better so uh, they're back to having an automatic feeder which is great because it's the times they need to get pushed I mean you guys can see how big they are they're getting to that size um, they're well over 200 pounds now um, we're wanting to get down we're wanting to get them to about 260 is our goal so we're gonna see what happens here guys so uh, put our sweet feed in there and we're gonna get them some marshmallows and uh, we're going to head back over to the house here in a second, and I'm going to try to see if that tractor's going to start. Uh, if it does, it does. If not, well, this will it start kind of failed, so we'll catch you guys in a second. All right, guys. Will it run? We're going to give her the old college try. I had to fix a ground wire, and, uh, well, we're going to see. All right, guys. So, uh, to answer the question, will it start? negative the uh, tractor I got to do some ground wire work on it looks like I tried to uh, sand down with the ground wire and on the ground wire to get it to connect better um, I might have to just get a whole new ground wire uh, I think it hasn't ran in a little over a year so that's fine it is what it is ground wires are cheap so um, I'm gonna drop in what I was talking about earlier with uh, talking about the things I hunt with uh, right here 
Alright guys, so I am back in from the stand, um, nothing. Uh, I don't know if that spot's dead, because honestly, I haven't seen any signs there. Uh, this morning I kind of searched around quite a bit when I got out of the stands. Uh, no fresh tracks, no fresh sign, no poop, no rubs, no nothing. So, um, I'm kind of thinking that spot might be dead right now, so um, it is what it is. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to go back out. Um, during normal firearm season in Missouri, uh, but that's fine. Um, I might be able to go a day in antlerless. I don't know. They made it weird this year. So antlerless used to be right after firearms, and it was like a week long. Well, now um, they've made it to where they're doing a second youth right after um, firearms, which that second youth was in January always. But now they're doing that after firearms, and then they're doing antlerless for only three days in December, which I guess too many does were harvested last year is why they modified it. I don't know. Um, that's normally why they modify the seasons like that. And then they've made it to where alternative methods isn't even until the end of December. It starts December 28th and goes to January 7th, which is very weird to me. Um, it's just new and it's changed. So I'm going to show you guys real quick what I hunt with. Um, what I hunt with during firearms portion and antlerless, and then what I hunt with during alternatives. So, uh... I'm going to catch you guys up with uh, what I used to hunt with. So these are what I hunt with. Um, firearm season, I use a Mossberg 500. Anybody that has a Mossberg knows they are one of the most durable shotguns out there. Um, you could drop this thing off the top of a house, pick it up, and it would still shoot. That's how durable they are, um, and that's how reliable they are. I wouldn't, uh, honestly, if I was picking a shotgun, I have a, a single shot New England Arms 20 gauge, but uh, honestly, anymore, I wouldn't pick that over this. Um, this is the most reliable shotgun I think I've ever had, except for obviously the single shot. Single shot, it's easy, it's got a hammer on it, it goes off every time, but this is probably the most reliable pump action shotgun I've Honestly, for the price on the market, best shotgun you could probably get. I know everybody's going to be like, well, like I, I like my Remington 870 and this and this and this. Honestly, though, guys, if you want a cheap, reliable, well, not cheap. I mean, it was still almost for $450. But um, if you want a good shotgun for the money, Mossberg 500. And no, I'm not a paid spokesperson of Mossberg. I just love this shotgun so much. Um, and the th coolest thing about it is you can take your waterfowl plug out if you're shooting trap and you can have six rounds in it. Um, but if you're going back out to hunt, any kind of hunting, even deer hunting, I put the waterfowl plug back in just in case. Um, I don't know if a game warden's going to be picky about that if you're out deer hunting, um, if you don't have your waterfowl plug in, but I just put it back in always. It should only take you one round anyway to drop a deer. So, um, And what I shoot out of that is, let me grab it for you guys. Getting a peek at uh, the other weapons there. But what I shoot out of that is a two and three quarter inch slug. So, and no, I don't shoot it out of a rifled slug barrel. Um, a lot of people use rifled slug barrels, but um, I use smooth bore. Uh, the longest shot I normally ever have is 30, 35 yards. Smooth bore is accurate. I say up to about 50 yards. Uh, smooth bore with a slug is accurate uh, at a minimum of 50 yards. Honestly, with my 20 gauge, um, smooth bore with a full choke. Um, I shot a slug at a deer out to 80 yards and dropped it dead right where it was. Um, that was a double lung and a heart. So, um, but if you hit them in the wrong spot, this is going to take out a lot of your meat, guys. This is like throwing a pie pan at them at high speeds. So, but that's what I, uh, that's what I use during firearms portion, guys. And then, um, during alternative methods, I have my St. Louis Hawken 50 caliber, um, so it's cap and ball, muzzle loader, whatever you want to call it, um, but it is my uh, St. Louis Hawk and 50 caliber. Um, those of you guys that know me know I do reenactments, um, and I have plenty of black powder firearms. Um, I have black powder revolvers, black powder rifles, I just have plenty of black powder firearms. So shooting black powder during um, alternative is no big deal for me. Um, I do have to, I have a new site up here. Um, I have to sight it in, and um, so you file these down to get it sighted in good. Um, I, my sight broke off previously, so one of our good buddies, Bob, put that sight on there for me, and I haven't sighted it in since that got put on there, so there's going to be a range day sighting this in, and uh, we'll probably bring you guys along for that. 
And then my trusty sidearm. Some of you love them, some of you hate them. This is my uh, Remington R1 1911. Um, some people love 1911s, some people hate 1911s. But the nice thing is, is I can use this during all fire or all seasons. Um, because during alternative methods, any center fire pistol um, with a capacity of less than 11 rounds, which huh, it's a 1911, it only has eight rounds, uh, seven in the seven in the mag and uh, one in the chamber, so you can hold eight rounds in it. But uh, so yeah, um, I use this as my trusty sidearm during all seasons, just because it is one of the handiest little fight. It's not loaded, guys. Um, one of the handiest little uh, sidearms that uh, there is, and it's a 45, guys. If you hit a deer with a 45, especially at hollow points, they're they're going down. They're not moving anywhere, um, and that's the thing that when I deer hunt. I am deer hunting to kill the deer. I don't want to injure it. I don't want to have to chase. So um, that's what I use for hunting, guys. Uh, I figured you guys might like a little, uh, I don't know, just a little fill-in of uh, the firearms that I use during deer hunting. Well, I hope you guys like that little bit of segment about uh, what I use to go hunt with. Um, like I was saying, I uh, can't really go during uh, the antlerless portion, but I'll be able to go during alternative deer season. So. Um, I'll hopefully get a good hunting video in through there. Um, that's going to be it today, guys. We're going to deliver some eggs and uh, go back and meal prep for our shift at work. So uh, if you guys want to, drop a like down below and uh, comment if you want. Uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. And don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat, all at Hummer's Goats and Yolks. Have a great Thanksgiving, guys, and we will catch you guys later.